Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here, back with another tutorial today, and we are going to talk about connecting IntelliJ's database tools to an H2 database. So this question came up in a couple of videos, and it really centered around the fact that uh, people are creating H2 databases, whether it's, uh, most of the time it's an in-memory database, and IntelliJ has these really nice database tools, and they wanted to connect those database tools to the database so that they could see, you know, the tables, the schema, the data, et cetera. And so what we'll do is we'll take a look at that today by creating a quick Spring Boot application that uses Web, H2, uh, Spring Data, JPA, and we'll create a little seed data, and then we'll talk about how we uh, can connect to an H2 database, both in memory and file, and then finally we'll take a look at how it can easily connect the IntelliJ database tools to that database. So before I get started, I'm just gonna look here at my IntelliJ preferences, uh, my plugins, and if we want to, we can look at the plugins directory, and I'm gonna look at installed, and what we're gonna cover today is just this database tools and SQLs, so you should be able to get this uh, no matter what, I think this will work on both the Community Edition and the Ultimate. I'm running Ultimate um, just for, for reference. So let's go ahead and create a new project. <clears throat> and here we're going to use the Spring Initializer, but as I said, if you are not using the uh, Ultimate Edition, you may not have this plugin for IntelliJ, but it's not a big deal. You can head over to start.spring.io, uh, go ahead and fill out your project information there, download it, and then import it into the free version of IntelliJ, and everything that we're gonna do here today should work just fine. So I'm using Java 8, I'm gonna go ahead and click Next. I'm gonna go ahead and say, dev.danvega, and we'll call this, what do I want to call this? Just want to make sure that I'm in sync with my repo here. So I'm going to call this H2 demo. I'm going to click next, and we're going to select a few dependencies here. We're going to start with the Spring Boot dev tools. We're going to head over to web and choose Spring Web. And finally, in SQL, we're going to choose Spring Data JPA, even though we're not really using any uh, JPA stuff here. And I'm going to choose H2 Database. So I'm going to click Next. I'm throwing that in a folder called Boot. We're going to click Finish. And this is going to load up in IntelliJ. And I'm just going to give it a second to um, load up here. I'm going to add as a Maven project. All right, so this is a just a normal Spring Boot application. Uh, nothing crazy going on here. So if we go into main, we have our H2 demo application. We're not gonna fire this up just yet. I just wanna do a couple of things. So if we look in the palm.xml, we all notice that we do in fact have the H2 dependency. So we can go ahead and create a database and again, the H2 database is really meant for development purposes. I wouldn't take this and then go launch this into production. This is really a nice way uh, to create uh, rapid prototypes. And in this case, in the first case, we're gonna use an in-memory database, but with H2, there are also some different modes that you can use. Uh, you can also create a file database, which we'll look at today as well. So the first thing that we wanna do is under resources, I'm actually going to create a couple of files. I'm going to create one called schema. Dot, um, where am I? SQL. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to drop some SQL in here. And this is going to be the schema for our database. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here so you don't have to watch me type it out. I'm going to change the dialect to H2. And this is going to run when the application starts up. So this is one way that you can seed data into your database. Uh, this does follow a naming convention. You can go ahead and look up the documentation if you're using a different database. Um, there are ways to, to create different uh, schemas or ways to create different environment schemas. Uh, go ahead and check out the docs for that. But if 
By using schema.sql as a convention under the resources folder, this is going to go ahead and get run when our application starts. So it'll go ahead and drop the table if it exists. And after that, it'll go ahead and create a new table with an ID, first name, last name, and email address. So we're going to create one more in here. I'm going to go ahead and say file, and we're going to call this data.sql. And what this is going to do is after the SQL is run, it's going to go ahead and insert some data for me. So as you can see there, it's just inserting three rows with some IDs, first name, last name, and email. So with that in place, we have one more thing to do. We're going to head over to application.properties, and this is kind of where we configure everything in our application. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say spring.h2 console, and I'm going to go ahead and enable this. So this is our first step. This is something that we probably have all done. But if we go ahead and save this, actually one more thing I want to show you. By default, if you don't give it a data source URL, so you don't, you're not giving the data, data source a name or anything, the default URL is going to be JDBC um, H2 mem test DB. So that is the default if we don't do anything. So I'm going to comment that out just so you can see that and we can go ahead and paste that in. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my application here and just run H2 demo application. And what this is going to do is fire up. It's going to make it available on localhost 8080. And because we said the H2 console is enabled, it's going to enable that console so that we can go ahead and log into the console and see some data. Okay, so here I am, localhost 8080. The default URL for the H2 console is h 2 console. You can go ahead and change that again in application.properties if you want. I'm going to go ahead and inf uh, insert that default JDBC URL. Uh, the default username is SA. The password is nothing. So if we log in here, we can see our employees table. If we go ahead and run this, we can see our initial seed of data. So that's one way of doing it. So this kind of brings us back to the question. All right, so now I want, I want to be able to connect to that database using the database tools. So one of the easiest ways to set up a data source, because it can be kind of confusing in here, is to come in here. You can say data source. You can pick what type it is. Then there are a lot of like um, parameters that you got to set. I think the easiest way is to just come in here and say data source from URL. It's picked up what is on my clipboard. Realize that it needs the H2 driver. I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and test this connection. And what happens is when I go ahead and do this, it's going to say, all right, uh, I can connect to that. Let me hit OK. Now, if I go into test DB and go under schemas, I don't see anything under public. And so this kind of did throw me off the first time, but what's happening is this is an in-memory database, remember. And the in-memory database uh, cannot be accessed by two different connections. And, and the reason for that is each connection, so we have our app connection and we have a um, a database tools connection within IntelliJ, right? Each URL is basically accessing it on a virtual machine and in its own class loader environment. And because of that, they're almost like they're almost separate instances, right? So I can't see anything here because it doesn't exist. Now back in the app world, when that one lo lo uh, ran and launched up, um, it ran ago, it went ahead and used schema.sql, data.sql, and everything worked just fine. So that's a long-winded way of saying, really, I don't know of a way that you can connect two instances to an in-memory database like that. But uh, don't worry about it. We do have a workaround for this. So as I said before, again, we're just using H2 as a way to kind of rapidly prototype out our application, right? What I want to do is instead of using the in-memory database, I'm going to switch over to a file database. And so this file is going to live within this project. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and paste this in so you don't have to watch me type this out. 
All right, so what we're saying here though is that we want a new data source URL. And that URL is no longer gonna be an in-memory database. So that default is in-memory. What we are saying is we want this to be a file. And that file is an absolute path that's going to live within users all the way down to my project. And then I wanna put it in source main resources data. So let's create a new folder in here. We're gonna call this data. And let's actually change this. I'm gonna call this employees. And then we'll talk about what this is in a second. If I left this off, I would not be able to connect to it within IntelliJ. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a description for that below, but let me just grab that URL so we can take a look. And we'll go here. So auto server. So this is automatic mix mode. So multiple processes can access the same database without having to start the server manually. To do that, append auto server equals true to the database URL. So you're gonna need that if you wanna both connect to it using the H2 console and then the IntelliJ database tools. So just a little trick there. So. And then this right here is the database. This is the name of the file that's going to get written to the disk. Okay, so with this in place, let's go ahead and run the application again. And hopefully what should happen here is it should start up correctly. And if you have any problems, that could, uh, could be a path issue. You might be uh, trying to write um, to a different path that doesn't exist. Um, so I know if I didn't create this data folder, I would it would have thrown an error there. Um, if you were just trying to use a relative path or something like that. So now what I want to do is, let me see if this shows up yet. Yep. So if I reload from disk, if I look under there, I do have that employees.mb.db. That is the database, and then there is a lock on it. So the first thing I want to do is actually come back to the H2 console. And we're gonna have to copy this URL again because it's the URL that we're connecting to. Uh, again, SA, we can test the connection. We're gonna connect. Here's our table and there's our three rows. So now what we can do is go over to the database tools. Again, I'm gonna go data source from URL. I'm gonna use that URL. It's going to be an H2. I'm gonna click OK. Uh, one more time, I'm gonna test connection and I'm gonna say the SA is the username, password is empty, and I've connected to it. So now when I click OK, I go in here, I go to schemas, and I go to public, now I can see some tables. And so I can double click on this and I can actually see my data. So this is a, a really nice way of working on, again, like a, a development type project. And the database tools here in IntelliJ are really nice. And I think the advantage here is obviously an in-memory database is going to disappear every time you go ahead and start up the application. This will persist data to the file. Not only that, you could check this into a repository. If I was working on this on both my work computer and my personal computer, I can now have this in the GitHub repository, pull it down and use it. Um, the only thing there is you will have to double check this file may be different. So this is an absolute path. You can do something like uh, JDBC H2 and then use a relative path. Um, so that should be relative to the project, but I'd have to double check that. Uh, but in any sense, you can create a uh, file database here and then connect to it here in IntelliJ's database tools. Um, I do, I have tried this in a couple other database tools that I like. Uh, uh, Table Plus is one of my new faves, but I cannot connect to it there. I know there's an open issue to add H2 support to that, so that would be really cool to see. Um, but other than that, I think that is going to be it for today. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. 
And I want to go ahead and point, uh, ask this out today. So question of the day today, I'll go ahead and leave the question below. I'd like to hear your answers on this one. Um, but what are your, what are your, some of your favorite plugins for IntelliJ? So I work a lot in the community uh, in front end stuff too, where I use Visual Studio Code and there's just this plethora of, um, of plugins and, and themes and etc. At times it can almost be overwhelming. Um, so on the IntelliJ side, I'm always looking for new and exciting plugins or themes. So please go ahead and leave your comment below. What are some of your favorite themes and or plugins for IntelliJ? So again, if you found this useful, it would really help me out if you went ahead and leave a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel for me. And as always, friends, happy coding. <laughs>